Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. It is a sad fact, but it's true, writes John Nagel. When people today hear of God being referred to as Father, it often creates more mental barriers than open hearts. Unfortunately for more and more in our culture, the term Father causes individuals to think of someone who was absent, abusive, addicted, or all of the above. He's right. More than a few times I have had people, usually young women, tell me how thinking of God in terms of being a father to them, in spite of the fact that he is God, is difficult if not outwardly painful because of the distrust and anger they have towards a dad who wasn't there, who didn't care, who often abused them, ignored them, and certainly let them down. So can I expect the same thing of God? Ask one person. How sad that in a culture of brokenness, the picture of a loving father who is there for his children has become so maligned, so abused, and so out of focus. But there is one powerful truth you need to confront. God is not a man or human, weakened by the failures and scarred by the passions of the flesh. Moses put it like this. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? What does it mean when you address God as Father? Among many things, focus on several truths. First, calling God Father means you have a relationship with Him. He's not your uncle, nor just the man upstairs or a weak-kneed, bearded old man. Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father. The relationship of a father to a child can come through natural generation or by adoption. From the days of Roman law to the present, courts recognize both as having equal force. But adoption brings with it beautiful pictures. It means you were chosen. Adopting parents made decisions, and when they adopt, it's because they want a child. Does that tell you something about God? Writing to the Ephesians, Paul said, He chose us in Him before the creation of the world. God had a plan which included even you before He spoke the word and brought the world into existence. Two, calling God your Father brings an intimacy with Him. It's a connection whose links are chains of love and compassion. In Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught we are to look to our Heavenly Father for our daily bread, the most basic of human needs. He taught not only that Father knows best, but He knows what you need even before you ask Him. The New Testament also promises that your Father will provide for your needs. Calling God your Father also means He will be there for you. He sent His Son as His personal representative to show you the way back home. Like the prodigal, though, we have wandered far away from home, and the loving Father sent the gentle shepherd to pick us up give us robes of righteousness, and provide the means of finding a new relationship with God. Jesus said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Friend, don't base your relationship with the Father on your feelings, but on what the Word of God tells you about God. A final thought. In the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, there is a rather sad lament. God says of Israel, How gladly would I treat you like sons. I thought you would call me father and not turn away from following me. Find out about what it means to know God as father and then call him father with joy and gladness. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines. Guidelines.